Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review. This is where we take a look at all the videos we reviewed over the last week and tell you what we think of them. Here we go. Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. So last week I reviewed three things. Here we go. I reviewed a game called Anubix, which I rate a 4 out of 10. This is a roll and write. It feels very by the numbers. Uh, nothing new here. It's just sort of one of those roll and write that sometimes shows up. And it seems just to mark time to say, hey... We're still making roll and rides. Here's another one. You can definitely skip this one. Didn't bring anything new to the table, in my opinion. I reviewed Robin of Loxley, uh, which I rate a 7.5 out of 10. This is a two-player only game in which you are going to be collecting sets and then using what you've collected to move around a track on the outside. This is from Uva Rosenberg, and it uses some of the same mechanisms he's used in uh, some of his other games, like uh, Reich Holt and um, uh, what's the other one that he did? Gates of Luyang, that's the one. So it feels a little bit like those mechanically. I really like this one, though. It's punchy, it's faster, it's uh, thinky, has some nice tactics to it. A great game. And then lastly, I reviewed an expansion to Res Arcana, which is called Light and Darkness. Uh, Luke's a Tenebrae. Uh, this one I rate a 9 out of 10. I really like the expansion. I really like the base game, too. Res Arcana is a fantastic game. The expansion largely gives you more of the same. But because of the style of game it is, that means more uh, interesting combinations of cards, new cool powers, new answers to sort of old problems that you would find. How do I achieve this? Well, now there are more answers to that because of the expansion. And I really, really like that. Again, that's a 9 out of 10 from me. And that's it, everybody. Thanks for checking this out. See you on the next one. Hey folks, welcome back to another week in review. Did three video videos for you this week. The first one was a review for Bang the Dice Game Undead or Alive. It's a new expansion that's coming out or has come out for Bang the Dice Game. Gave this one an 8 out of 10. Really enjoyed everything that it did. Uh, there was a couple of things that I thought were superfluous. Didn't really need to be there. Unnecessary. Uh, so that's why it came down to an 8 out of 10 instead of higher than that. But I really did enjoy the expansion as the whole. So uh, go check that out. Also did a review for God of War, the card game from Come On Games. And I uh, gave this one an 8.5 out of 10. There were some difficulties with the rule book that uh, I had. So that's why it got uh, uh, knocked down a few points there. But I really do enjoy the game. I like all of the mechanisms involved. And I love the artwork uh, and uh, how the game plays. It just really is a fun game, so 8.5 out of 10 there. And then I also did a first impressions video for Rurik Don of Kiev. I've been having my eye on this one for a couple of years now, ever since they uh, showed it to us, I believe at Origins a couple of a couple of years ago. And uh, I've really l liked the look of it then, liked the idea behind it, played it during the 24-hour uh, uh, marathon, and I had a great time. So check out my uh, first impressions there. But that's it for me. Let's get back to the rest of your review. Okay, so for me, first, the mind extreme. Interestingly enough, the mind, I'm kind of, it's really growing on me. It's a game I'll play more and more. The mind extreme, where there's two piles, one going up, one going down. Sometimes you play cards face down. It's just too much. I already thought the game was, it hits a real nice sweet spot. I think fans of the mind will really, like if you're a diehard fan of the mind, you'll like it. I don't think it's for most people. Hoop, hoopla stack. It's just a stacking thing and you pull out the stuff in the bottom of the hoop. It's really fun once. Battlelands. This is a multiplayer card game. It's the Aftermath Edition from Plat Hat where you're playing different mice from the apocalypse down trying to control things. It's almost a little too fast but it's still a solid good game. Decalco. This is a tracing game where you trace pictures as fast as you can. It's a pretty fun party game. I mean, it's the same thing over and over. Trace pictures and try to get people to guess what they are just by looking at the tracing. But I think it's a clever idea. Runestones. This is uh, a game from Queen Games that is a deck building game to get runestones. I think the theme is very generic. But the gameplay itself, I thought, brought some unique things to the table as you can play two cards from your hand, but then you lose one forever. That's kind of an interesting idea, and I thought it was fun. Sanctum. This is a Diablo-looking game, but it's actually very Euro-ish in how it plays. Um, it's all about leveling up your character and getting more weapons. I mean, the whole game, it's marred by a bit. The end game is not as exciting as i like it to be, but the rest of the game is so fantastic that I just have so much fun with it. Ten Days in Europe is a reprint of the older game, 10 Days in Europe. Uh, it's in the 10 Days series, very solid addition to that, and this is a new printing that I like a lot. 
Project L. This is a game that box doesn't look very interesting, but the gameplay itself is a very simple engine building. Take some Tetris style blocks, put them in these things. Cool components. The whole thing looks neat. It plays very fast. It's an easy game to introduce to people who haven't played games before. Monster Baby Rescue. Now this is a kids game of sorts, but it's also a game adults can play. It's just across the board a great family game. From Vladimir Suchi, the guy who brought us Underwater Cities, makes usually a very complex game. This is a game of drafting tiles that just works really well. Highly recommend it. Another kids game, this one's definitely more for kids, but adults will be amused by it. Abdurk de Mauer, or Through the Wall. This is a game in which you have these ghosts trying to collect things to wear for a party, but it uses magnets in a clever, innovative way that I haven't seen before. Magic Maze on Mars, the sequel to Magic Maze. I think it surpasses the original. It is this fun, frenzied, real-time, cooperative game where you can't communicate other than by like staring at each other and, and maybe putting a pawn in front of somebody. Hilarious fun. And the best game I played this week, Blitzkrieg, a two-player, 20-minute World War II game. Very abstracted. The game itself, not that pretty, but it is so good. This back-and-forth tug-of-war. I am really liking this game. It's like Twilight Struggle in 20 minutes. Just great. We also did a live crowd surfing this week. And we at PAX, which is where we were most of the week, uh, we did our top 10 unsung games. It's not on our channel yet, but you should be able to find it on the live streaming from PAX. And when we can, we'll get it and upload it to our channel. That is it for this week. If you want to see the full reviews of these, check the links below. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and this has been Week in Review.